Once a Hollywood novelty, the technology, like IMAX, is rapidly becoming the preferred way to take in our favorite blockbusters. We all know how much fun it is to watch 3D, but what I want to know is how do these flimsy glasses take an image off the screen and put it in your face? Welcome to Stereoscope, where they're helping redefine the art of 3D in the digital age. Jeff. Dar. Hey. Good to meet you. Jeff Pierce is Stereoscope's owner and CEO. 3D allows us to see the depth of our environment, much the way we see normally with our, our binocular vision. So you're essentially trying to replicate what we experience every day in a screened entertainment environment. Stereoscope sees 3D as the logical next step in filmmaking. So what is 3D anyway? Our brains interpret depth by combining the slightly different images seen by our left and right eyes. We see in stereo. Stereoscopic photography creates that same 3D illusion by using two slightly different images, one for each eye. Sound simple? Not so much. When you have two separate images and they're not presented in the same temporal or physical space, then the brain has a hard time resolving those images and can make you motion sick. So how do they keep audiences raving and not retching? For answers, we turn to a legend in his field, John Rupkalvis, to find out. He's Stereoscope's in-house guru, and he's been inventing and improving 3D technology for over 50 years. Are you wearing 3D glasses right now? As a matter of fact, these are 3D glasses. These glasses are from the 1950s. Those don't look like the 3D glasses that I think most people are familiar with here. Now, those are called anaglyph glasses. Anaglyph, OK. Just like here, we're using color encoding. Mm -hmm. Here, we're using what they call polarization. In fact, there are many different kinds of 3D glasses. These are just a couple of examples. But they all serve essentially the same purpose. That purpose is to restrict the kind of light that enters each eye. For those old school anaglyph glasses to work, you need two layered images, one red, the other cyan. The eye with the red filter will only see the cyan image and vice versa for the cyan. There's just one not so surprising problem with anaglyph. It's nearly impossible to get the rest of the colors in your image to look right. The solution, polarization, invented way back in 1936. Now, I'd like for you to put on a pair of these 3D glasses and okay. uh, look towards the camera over here. We're going to take another pair of glasses and we're going to put those in front of the camera. You'll see that the glasses darken on one side. As he moves it across, they darken on the other side. And the glasses are actually acting like shutters. Instead of using color, polarized glasses use directional light waves. In this case, waves projected at opposing 45 degree angles. Light entering one lens is blocked by the other, so each eye sees only the image targeted for it. OK, so the, the glasses that we've seen, this is how an audience uh, views 3D entertainment. But you have to capture it in a certain way too, right? That is absolutely correct. That is the other part of the equation. Rule number one with 3D image capture is you have to shoot two images, often with side-by-side -side cameras that mimic the distance of human eyes. Rule number two, find out how close or far you want your subject to be from the audience. If you uh, are looking out in the distance, your eyes are parallel. Everyone watch his eyes. In order to focus on an image when it's that close, our eyes have to converge, our toe in. 3D cameras have to do the same thing, like this vintage rig from the 1970s. So a camera goes here, and a camera goes here. Correct. They would actually tow in the cameras, what they called converging. Oh, I see. So it's, it's basically emulating what's happening with our eyeballs. Exactly. So when a subject in front of the two cameras is far away, it would be parallel. Right. And then if the subject's closer, you tow it in. Exactly. The problem with towing in, 
Unlike our eyes, film and digital sensors are flat surfaces, causing distortion. If this were done uncorrected, you would get severe eye strain, headaches, and all the nasty things that you do not want to associate with 3D movies. Meet the latest solution to 3D headaches. And this is the guy who built it. Jason? Hey, Nar, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. These are some very wicked, cool-looking camera rigs Thank you have you. here, dude. Thank you very much. Jason Goodman is a stereographer and CEO of 21st Century 3D a production company partnering with Stereoscope to pioneer 3D camera tech. This is a 3D VX camera system that we developed. It starts its life as Panasonic DVX100, and we chop it in half and add a couple of Mac minis, uh, some uncompressed recording technology, solid-state hard drives, optical axial offset technology, you know, type of things you find off the shelf. If you don't know what all that means, trust me, it's awesome. They've basically taken a prosumer camera and Frankensteined it into HAL 9000. It looks like you took two kind of prosumer cameras, the D two DVX 100s, right. and you put them together. Now, why did you choose those? Well, you know, the camera uses a one-third inch sensor, which for a lot of applications, some people don't like. In case you don't speak geek, a quick translation. The camera sensor is the digital equivalent of film. It captures light and then converts it into a digital signal. A one-third inch sensor is what you find on your standard prosumer camera. For this application, it's ideal because it allows us to position the lenses very close together. And the distance between the lenses is a critical function of a, of a 3D camera. So we've got them very close to the uh, separation of a human observer. On average, human eyes are about two and a half inches apart. That's called the interocular distance. On a 3D camera, it's kind of like volume control. The farther apart the lens is, the more heightened the effect. So they are towing in? They aren't, actually. Th this is the only digital stereoscopic camera system in the world to have optical axial offset. Rather than crossing the camera's lens axes, we're able to shift an optical element inside the lens to achieve the same effect without introducing the distortions that you would get from the alternate method. This groundbreaking tech is great for avoiding headaches, but there's another plus. Fewer mechanics also means a lighter rig. The key design element with this camera was to make it the smallest and lightest self-contained stereoscopic camera in the world. This baby weighs in at 19 pounds, less than a third of a normal 3D camera. When it comes time to point and shoot, it's like the pistol in a stereographer's arsenal. And this, this is equivalent to an AK-47. Wow, that's radically different. Radically different, yeah. So these are, looks like red cameras. These are higher end, right. high def cameras. Yeah, the red is designed to be a digital cinematography camera. It uses a full size 35 millimeter sensor, 35 millimeter optics, the kind of uh, lenses you'd use to make a movie. And you know, because of the larger size, it makes it real tough to get the cameras right next to each other. You know, The spacing between them would be five or six inches, and it's not suitable for that many types of shots. The solution? an optical device called a beam splitter. Even though the cameras are perpendicular, the images are actually aligned by a series of one-way mirrors. And it might seem kind of bulky and awkward, but it's actually one of the most nimble beasts of its kind, able to fit on a steady cam. Filmmakers will soon be able to buy these rigs on the market, and maybe someday your home movies will get a lot more interesting. But in the meantime, I'm ready to sit back and enjoy Stereoscope's totally tubular 3D action. All right, Jason, surf's up. Oh, whoa. I, I mean, this is everyday kind of footage uh, of the beach, but it really comes to life with these glasses on. 